There are other sides to this besides Wall Street firms like Bank of America and Mr. Blanche or Mr. Curry at Goldman Sachs who look at the extractive process and say, what's the future look like? We do that now with Colombia. And Diego Puyo joins us there, Energy and Mines Minister, and of course with his tour of duty at the International Monetary Fund as well. We don't do this enough. When you look at the media talking about the extractive process of mining or even oil, what do we get wrong about the challenges you face in making supply happen? I think uh, in the in in the extractive industry sector, uh, we need to make sure that we have uh, more stability, obviously, on on the price side, uh, and and that's difficult because obviously it's uh, determined by the market forces. So I think you know it's uh, understanding how the production levels will change once we have those swings in prices, either <coughs> upside or or downward. I think that could be one of the things that you know is difficult to obviously forecast and understand uh, the response from the real sector. You you bring prodigious academics to this, unlike many others in extractive mining. Do you call a commodity super cycle now after years of disinflation and outright price deflation? Is it time that we have turned and we're moving higher? Well, it's looked like we're going in that direction, uh, not only with oil, as we saw yesterday, Brent, uh, for the first time, uh, for which is the Columbia reference, has crossed $80 per barrel. Uh, we've seen that with natural gas, obviously, in Asia and uh, European markets. And we're seeing that with coal as well, which has recovered more than 70, 75 percent in the last uh, 12 months. Well, how do you support your home industry, which is coal, with one of the biggest uh, mines out there, while also remaining on the right side of the debate over global warming, on the right side of all of the development in terms of what's next for energy production going forward? Well, uh, Lisa, we, we know that we need to be more competitive because uh, the demand for coal, for thermal coal, has been shifting toward the east. Uh, and we need to make sure that our companies are competitive in that market. So we've been helping those companies enter the Asian market. Uh, some companies have done it very well, like, for example, Drummond uh, and Serehon, obviously. Uh, and now I think with Serehon, uh, you obviously know that uh, Glencore announced the uh, buying the stakes of Anglo-American and BHP a couple of months ago. So I think that's a very good sign that they will continue uh, to mine uh, all of the assets in Serehon in the medium term. And, and you know, Colombia, obviously, would like to see the coal sector to continue to thrive as has done it over the last uh, three decades. Well, how do you get a foothold, though, in the new industries, right, the new energies? And I'm thinking of natural gas in particular, which is surging both in demand and in price. So we've been doing efforts to award new EMP blocks. Uh, we had an, a problem in Colombia because when we came into power in 2018, the country had gone through a period of five years without signing new EMP contracts. So we cleared some bottlenecks on the contractual side. And in these three years, we've signed now more than 35 EMP contracts. And we have a new round taking place this year, which will be awarding contracts by the end of the, of the year. So uh, we're focusing also, obviously, on gas prone basins offshore. Uh, but also in the Medium Valley uh, in onshore basins that are mature in Colombia and uh, are well known for its uh, gas prone. Is the mine mechanized or does it employ so many people it's a domestic labor issue for Colombia? Uh, it, even though it's not labor intensive, it is the main employer in the two provinces where we have Like uh, how many mines. people roughly? About 10,000 people. You get 10,000 people strapped to coal you have, as Lisa mentioned, a global mandate to reduce coal. How do you juxtapose that? I mean, five years out to you, forget about the limousines outside the UN, or at, I mean, you and I have done IMF World Bank 47 times. Forget about the suits and ties. How do you juxtapose that out five or 10 years as we're asking China to diminish coal? So, Tom, that's a very good question, and our main public policy in the sector has been energy transition. Colombia has world-class resources, both wind and solar, and it happens to be that the highest potential is exactly where the coal mines are, which is the northern part of the country. So we've done auctions, we've created a fiscal framework to attract investment into uh, this uh, variable or unconventional renewable energy sources, and we're going in 2018 from less than 0.2% of our 
power matrix made up of renewables to about 12% in 2022. And we see a significant opportunity for workers mm -hmm. in these regions to move and have not only a just, but a well-managed transition over time to uh, variable renewable energy. Diego, we're talking about the potential for energy crisis across the world. We see energy shortages certainly in the United Kingdom. Uh, there's a potential for one in China. How do you avoid something similar happening in a place like Colombia from your standpoint? So we need to make sure that we exploit our natural resources very well. So Colombia uh, is, has a comparative advantage because right now uh, our power matrix depends largely on hydropower. We have significant hydro resources. So what we're doing is we're complementing those resources with wind and solar and obviously having you know about 20% or so of natural gas and coal uh, power uh, base load that we, so we, we can complement the intermittency mm -hmm. on water, wind and sun. So our matrix is looking quite good it's going to be better once we finish this uh, you know yeah. ramp up in energy transition process let's get to the most important extractive commodity of Colombia what are you gonna do about the price of a cup of coffee <laughs> help us here you know and and that's something that uh, it's under the agriculture ministry but I think we're very happy <laughs> but you're here so we're asking you <laughs> but, but, but my, my answer there would be you no know, we're, we're very happy to see uh, strong prices for coffee are we <laughs> <laughs> in Colombia of course <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I think the, the demand for coffee maybe is more inelastic than what we think. Are we? Really? <laughs> Thank you. No Killing kidding. it here with the IMF analysis. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to add? <laughs> no, I think uh, I, I would like to add, you know, the energy transition process that we've been uh, doing yeah. in Colombia has a couple of very uh, significant milestones that are taking place right now. So on Thursday, we'll be launching with President Duque the hydrogen roadmap. Colombia has significant potential to produce both green and blue hydrogen. And we also awarded uh, two months ago the first auction in Latin America for large-scale storage with batteries. See how he did this, Lisa? He got right back on <laughs> Yeah, screen. well, he didn't, he didn't even blink My eye. youngest daughter's popping $8 a cup of something at Starbucks, and it's just killing uh, me. Yeah, just your daughter. Diego, thank you so <laughs> much. Minister Pio uh, with us from Colombia.